Hello everyone, this is Rajesh Kumar. I welcome you all to this video. In this video, we'll be talking about the different types of switching. And uh, the agenda basically of this video is to uh, have a basic understanding how the connectionless, connection oriented, and the message switching works. So uh, let's start with the video. So switching. Uh, to understand this concept, you need to understand that this is a kind of mechanism within uh, once the packet is received on the layer uh, on the device on the switch uh, the processing of that packet is known as switching so the switching basically has some component uh, here the switching only works at the layer 2 of the osi model this is also known as the data link layer the data at this level is also known as or referred as uh, segment and the port where the data is received is known as the ingress port and the data uh, from where the data is sent out is known as the egress port. Let's assume that we have uh, different devices. We have two computers connected to a switch and uh, these two computers would like to share some data with each other. Computer A has some data to send to computer B. So now the computer A transfers the data to computer B at this moment, you can see that the data will be received on this particular port where this connection is built in. So this connection or this port will be known as the ingress port. And now the computer B is connected on this particular port. So this port, because the data has to be sent out of this port, so this port will be known as the egress port into this communication. Uh, in this scenario, let's assume that we have some other devices as well, which are connected onto the different ports. So how this switch will take the decision to which port it has to send out the data so that the data receives to the uh, exact destination. For that, the switch maintains the MAC table uh, or the MAC address table, you say. In the MAC address table, the switch keeps the information about the VLAN, and it also uh, keeps the information about this port number uh, where that port uh, about the port number and the mac address uh, where that particular mac address is connected to so uh, the forwarding decision is actually based on the mac table if you would like to know more know more about this process please refer to my other video wherein i have explained how the mac table is learned so uh, using the MAC table, the switch takes the decision and sends the data out to the uh, this particular port. So this is also known as the, uh, this process is known as the switching. So as you understand that we can divide the switching into three major processes, such as uh, the three major categories instead, I should say. Uh, the first is uh, the connectionless, the second one is connection oriented, and the third one is message switching. In the connectionless, uh, connectionless sometimes also referred as the packet switching or sometimes people call it as datagram switching as well. In the connectionless uh, switching, a big amount of data is divided into the smaller chunks and those chunks are actually forwarded uh, or added with the source and destination uh, MAC addresses and transferred over to the uh, network to deliver it to the uh, destination. Uh, less switching is faster as compared to the other types of uh, switching that we have because the devices which are connected uh, in between the source and destinations uh, those devices has to process the small amount of data they do not have to process the uh, big chunk at a time uh, last but not the least uh, the switching uh, or the data that we transfer using this connection less switching type can be prioritized we can uh, let's let's assume we have 10 different packets to transfer so we can uh, prioritize some of the packets out of them so that those packets takes preference while the switch has to take decision or to process the data so the prioritized data will be sent first before all other packets uh, to explain it little further let's assume we have one computer connected to a switch here this switch is connected to another computer. This computer has this much data that it would like to send out to the other destination here. So now this computer will actually divide or you, you'll say that the and that this is uh, this device will divide this data into the smaller chunks and these chunks number one, 
2, 3, 4 and so on will be sent to the destination individually. Uh, let's understand this process a little further with the uh, uh, with a small demonstration. Okay, uh, so in this demonstration, uh, computer A, B, C, we have three computers connected in this topology. We have different uh, node type as well. I mean, there are different switches you can see into the network. So let's assume that computer A has some data that it likes to send to uh, computer C here. Uh, this one is computer C. So it has some data to send to computer C. So now let's assume that this one has uh, a amount of data and that data is divided into four different chunks. Okay, so these uh, chunks uh, will refer to them with the sequence number as uh, or the number as one, two, three, four. So these four packets or the four chunks has to be transferred to the destination. Now the computer A uh, can randomly take some amount of data from here and will transfer the data out to the uh, switching process. And as you can see that the packet number one and four has taken the upper path of the network topology via this route, this has reached to the destination. Now the important part to remember about the packet switching is the, for, uh, the big amount of data is divided into smaller chunks, but it is not mandatory to send those chunks using the same path as I said earlier. They can be traversed using the different path. So packet number one and four has been transferred to the C now. Uh, now the packet number two and three is left. So now this switch will take another packet, let's assume packet number two and will forward the packet to the destination. And this time the packet two has taken a different path reaching uh, to reach the destination. The last packet, which is the packet number three, will also be transferred to the destination, but this will also take the different path to the to reach the destination. So now you, as you can see that all these different uh, chunks has taken different ways to reach the destination. However, once the uh, entire packet or the entire data is received at the destination, this re destination reassembles this data and uh, process it uh, to represent this data to the user and accordingly the response is sent back to the host A or to the source. So this was a small demonstration how the packet switching basically works into the network. The another mechanism in the switching we have as a connection oriented or the circuit switching. In the circuit switching uh, this is mostly used for the voice traffic Basically, uh, in this uh, switching type, this circuit switching uh, creates a dedicated channel between the source and destination for the data transfer. Uh, basically, in the connection-oriented switching, this switching has to uh, perform three basic tasks. It establishes the connection between source and destination. It transfers the data using the same uh, circuit. And uh, once the data transfer is enabled, the disconnection of the circuit is also responsible uh, or is a part of this uh, switching type. Usually uh, the phone calls that we make is a good example that we can take uh, for the circuit switching. So here as you can see that we have two telephone uh, given in the graphic here. We have telephone A and B so there's both uh, you know the users would like to communicate with each other although we have different paths that we can take. However this particular channel uh, that you can see in the diagram from here has been dedicated. This one here, the red lines that you can see, this has been dedicatedly uh, allowed to these two users so that they can transfer their data and uh, communicate uh, with each other accordingly. Message switching. In message switching, sometimes this is also referred as uh, store and forward technique. Uh, this is the most common technique which is used in the network these days. Uh, in this uh, store and forward technique, uh, there's no dedicated connection uh, or the circuit uh, established uh, between the source and destination. Uh, the data, the complete data is known as the independent block. So we do not uh, break down the data into the further smaller chunks like one packet, one segment will remain as a segment. The segment will not be further uh, divided uh, and sent using the different path. And in this case, uh, the data which uh, has to traverse through different devices uh, in the network, 
that data is checked against the error uh, at every single device into the network just to make sure that the data is error free. Uh, we use the CRC for the error detection mechanism to find out if the data has been uh, tuned on the path or if the data has been uh, uh, is error free or not. So uh, in the store and forward, let's say uh, we have different uh, uh, switches connected and uh, we have host A here and host B here. So host A likes to send some data to host B. So in this case, as we say that device A has some data that it would like to send to device B, this data is sent out of the uh, device and received by the switch A. This will check this data with the CRC to make sure that the data is error free. And once this data is found as error free data, the switch A will ask switch B if it is available to receive this data or not. That means that uh, every device has certain buffer wherein uh, the device keeps the data, uh, the received data in the buffer. Uh, for the further processing. Let's say that uh, device B has a buffer of 10 files that it can receive up to receives up to 10 files and store them into the buffer memory. And this data will be processed one by one. Like first the file which was received at the earliest was uh, will be uh, processed and then the file number two and the three and so on will be processed. So uh, just to make sure that the buffer uh, at the device B is available, the switch A will send the request to know if the device B is ready to receive the data or not. And it says that as you can see that, hey, do you have enough buffer to receive this data? It will wait for the reply back. The switch says yes, uh, it is free to receive that much data and the device A sends that data out to the switch B. Uh, the same process is followed everywhere on every device. The device B will check that data against the CRC and will request the device D, uh, if the device D has the enough space to receive or enough buffer to receive that data or not. Now this will request the device pay he switched uh, D. Uh, do you have enough buffer to receive the data? However, the device D, let's assume that uh, is running out of the resources and it is completely occupied. So device D cannot receive the data at this time. Device T denies stating that I do not have enough buffer to store that data and it requests the device B to wait. In this case, the device B will wait for some time and will send another request uh, to device C to find out if the device C is available to receive that data now or not. So the same process will be followed and now let's assume that device B has enough buffer space. So it will say, yes, I am free now. Please send the data to me now. So in that case, the data will be forwarded to device T and device T will uh, check the data against CRC and will finally transfer the data to the uh, destination. So this is how uh, the store and forward switching technique works. It is stored at every device into the buffer memory, checked against the CRC and uh, will wait for the acknowledgement or will wait for the approval from the next device and once the approval uh, is received then only the device uh, sends the data to the uh, next node. So, so that was all in this video to uh, share with you guys. Please do like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions about this uh, video or about any topic, please do mention that into the comment section. I'll be more than happy to assist you. Thank you very much.